how would you describe, um, given that you've kind of been around all of these different extraction types, how would you briefly summarize some of the pros and cons to those different extraction methods? Like what's sort of driving those decisions of why people are choosing one over the other, CO2 over hydrocarbons or over ethanol? Sure. Um, so the first uh, question that everyone has to ask themselves is what do you want to make? Yeah. Um, your end product is really important. And a really quick and easy way to simplify that is um, does your final product need to have the original terpene and flavor profile from the plant? Yes or no? Um, and, you know, a yes to that answer means that you're looking at CO2 or uh, liquid hydrocarbons. If it's a no, then you can look at CO2, liquid hydrocarbons, or potentially ethanol or heptane or, you know, some mm -hmm. of these other products. Um, if you, uh, the other question you have to ask yourself is what type of cannabinoids are you looking for? Do yeah. you need the acid form? Do you need those, um, you know, crystalline solids or are you looking for a decarboxylated product because certain extraction methods are also more likely to give you one or the other. And so, um, those two questions will usually shorten your list right away. And so from there, you know, ethanol is one of the best solvents suited for scale currently. And the reason for that is that so much ethanol extraction already exists in other industries. It's considered food safe. Yeah. And so there are, you know, regulations and equipment in place that we can just straight up copy and, um, you know, put into effect for cannabis. However, the boiling temperature for ethanol and, um, you know, its interactions with water mm -hmm. are really problematic, uh, especially depending on the qualities of your inputs. And so you lose terpene content almost no matter what. And you are also um, at risk for some degradation and some pH issues, um, extraction of undesirable compounds mm -hmm. like sugars. And so there's a lot of things to consider that um, are going to lead you to, first of all, a decarboxylated product, um, but also more than likely an isolated product. It's going to be harder for you to have a clean oil that doesn't call for a lot of post-processing and cleanup. Yeah. I, that seems like a, um, maybe that's a, like a misconception uh, in some circles that you would actually have like a um, um, wider diversity of some of these compounds in an ethanol extract or even a CO2 extract. Um, but that's something I've run into in my own experience, at, you know, working in some of these labs and seeing like for CO2, a lot of times the material is um, decarboxylated before it ever, you mm -hmm. know, goes into the extractor. Right. Um, yep. and, and so obviously doing that process, you're losing terpenes, you're, you know, anything volatile, you're losing a lot of volatiles, um, especially those really lightweight ones. And then with ethanol, before I before I really got involved in some of this work, I didn't realize how much um, refinement went into ethanol extracts to clean them up. Right. Um, and now Absolutely. and now I've learned a lot of that pathway leads to just making distillates or isolates. Um, exactly. So um, yeah, it's it's fascinating because before I got experience in some of this, I had heard um, I don't know just people speaking very generally that, um, well, of course, your ethanol extracts are going to have more phytochemical diversity in them um, mm. or with CO2, you know, that you can target these fractions. And it's like, yeah, that's true. But everything comes at a cost with, sure. with each of these uh, technologies. Right. And so, you know, the the drawbacks are, you know, definitely very chemical. Um, but the benefit is that if you want to process 5,000 pounds or more per yeah. day of raw material, ethanol is your current best option. Um, however, that 5,000 pounds that you extracted that day isn't ready for sale that day. Right, it's, yeah. Um, it's still in solution, most yeah. likely. It's a you big know? picture. Um, exactly. So, um, you know, there's still more days in that final product production end. Mm -hmm. um, if we look at CO2, CO2 is a very complicated product because CO2 is a flexible solvent. Mm -hmm. um, it relies completely on the operator and the equipment having a plan and sticking to it. And so CO2 is capable of being an excellent uh, solvent for terpene extraction. It's also capable of extracting a lot of water and wax and <laughs> nonsense, yep, yep. Um, just depending on you know how that equipment is used and how efficient that process is. A lot of people decarboxylate their material, like you mentioned, um, to avoid the water issues, which means 
sacrificing terpene content, which is a bummer because uh, CO2 is capable of doing probably one of the best yeah. jobs with terpenes as far as solvent extraction would go. Um, but, you know, it, it comes generally with the cost of still requiring winterization mm -hmm. in ethanol. Yep. So I tend to put CO2 and ethanol together because whether you make your crude with ethanol or you make it with CO2, you probably are going to be following the post-processing yeah. path. Um, that's the same either way, which would be that winterization and filtration and then probably most likely distillation. Right. Yeah. Um, and the, the exception to not going to distillate is usually um, still just to be in that raw oil form. So maybe you might not distill, but it's still only available for pens or for, you know, food. It's still not, um, you know, it's still a limited product as far as what you can do with it. Yeah. Um, you know, and so hydrocarbon is a lot more flexible in that regard because while it is a very small input batch size, we're doing, you know, 500 pounds or less per day in the average lab, um, you know, which is not massive scale. We're yeah, not going to yeah, feed the right. world with that. Um, however, I don't have any of that week-long post-processing that follows it up. Mm -hmm. So while I might only get to process 500 pounds that day, I could sell the oil that I made that day the next day, yeah. Um, which is, you know, a big difference. And it's um, something that, you know, we often skip when we look at our production plans mm -hmm. is, you know, how many, uh, you know, like we think about how much can this equipment do, right. you know, per pound, per yep. hour, whatever. But we have to bring it all the way back and say, okay, well, all of this equipment in a straight line is going to take how long from raw material to packaged and for sale. Exactly. And hydrocarbon is absolutely the fastest for that. Butane and propane evaporate at very low temperatures, which means we get the acid form, mm -hmm. which means I can go to Delta 9. I can distill it. I can make a tincture. Right. I can make edibles. Or I can make all of these other things that I can't do um, as easily or as quickly with CO2 or ethanol. Yeah. So that um, that post-processing flexibility is the primary advantage there. It is, however, combustible. Yeah. And so, you know, with ethanol, we have the flammable issue. And with CO2, we have the high pressure issue. Mm -hmm. With the liquid hydrocarbons, we have both. Yeah. So, um, you know, the risks are significant and the risks are only mitigated via equipment and safe workspace. There's, you know, there's no safe way to just be careful, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. and statistically speaking, uh, for everyone who is going to listen to this and think, well, I've been doing it for years, statistically speaking, the more days you've gotten away with it, mm -hmm. the closer you are getting to the day when you won't, it will come. And so, uh, you know, the, the safety risks are significant because it is combustible in nature. Yeah. However, it is a clean extraction method. Um, butane and propane don't dissolve molt. They mm -hmm. can't carry over, uh, you know, water as easily. So um, the final product, because there's, it's, you know, very easy to remove the solvent and the solvents are food safe and our exposure to them is um, generally non-toxic. They're very safe products. Whereas with ethanol, um, high levels of residual ethanol uh, can certainly be harmful, especially for oral ingestion. And, um, you know, that high level of water content in a lot of CO2 products can lead to microbial growth. Yeah, and yep. so we have, um, you know, some, you know, some pros and cons, both on the processing side, mm -hmm. as well as for the actual consumer. Because if I need a product that can store for a very long time with limited degradation, a hydrocarbon extracted product probably has a better shelf life than an ethanol extracted product um, or a CO2 extracted product based on literally just their moisture content.